Good morning, class. Today is our second week of our subject fundamentals of accounting, business, and management one. Last time we have discussed already about the introduction of of this subject and how accounting began in the history. So, balikan nga natin, class, yung ating mga na-discuss last week as a sort of review. Natalakay natin last week na ang recording and financial transactions has been around for as long as people have been keeping track of commerce. And accounting has a long history with its origins in the earliest transactions between people and those people used wet clay tablets to record their transactions with other people. So, noon pa man, sinasabi dito na ang mga tao ay engaged na sa banking. Or kung hindi man actually banking na iniisip natin ngayon, financial matters, meron nang nagaganap na transaction sa kanila. At para hindi nila makalimutan yung kanila mga transaction, lalo na pagdating dun sa mga collectibles or payables nila, nire-record nila ito sa wet clay tablets. At uh, hanggang sa naging eh, nag-improve nang nag-improve yung accounting procedures, yung bookkeeping procedures, at ang uh, nagkaroon na ng mga uh, standardization. Okay? Nagkaroon na rin ng mga tinatawag nating principles. Hanggang sa panahon ngayon, ang ating accounting principles ay moderno na. Ang bawat bansa ay meron ng mga tinatawag nating principles at mga rules of recording and reporting. At gumagamit na rin tayo ngayon ng mga online spreadsheets para sa pagre-record, sa pagbubukiping, at gayon din sa pag-produce ng report or financial statements. Ngayon, gusto kong tanungin kayo ng ilang mga katanungan bilang mga estudyante at pag-isipan ninyo yung mga isasagot nyo rito. So, think about this, guys. Do you belong to a family with no set of rules being implemented? Do you belong to any group with existing set of rules but you do your own rules? Do you work in a company with specific policies but you do not adhere to those policies? What if may sarili kayong rules, may sarili kayong batas, pero kayo ay kabilang isang organisasyon na merong sinusunod na sabihin natin rules, um, policies, principles, or yung norms na tinatawag natin. Ano ang mangyayari or ano ang magiging epekto nito sa organisasyon kung ang ilan sa mga members ay hindi sumusunod? Ang ating pag-aaralan ngayon ay ang tungkol sa accounting concepts and principles. So, pinag-uusapan natin principles at concepts. Itong mga principles na ito ay inilagay na no, ng mga accounting experts natin. At dito mal- nalaman natin, tanakaraang lesson natin, na may mga existing organizations ngayon na siyang nag-set ng rules ng accounting procedures. So, accounting concepts and principles. Sabi nga natin, class, accounting is the language of business as it communicates the financial condition and performance of a business enterprise to interested users for decision making accounting as the language of business it deals about the communication aspect ang accounting ay nakikipag-communicate between the stakeholders or interested users para makabuo ng decision accounting practices should adhere to rules and procedures of generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP. Sinusunod natin ngayon 
ang uh, lahat ng ginagawa natin sa accounting ay dapat nag adhere doon sa generally accepted accounting principles. The accounting standards used in the Philippines are the Philippine Accounting Standards and Philippine Financial Reporting Standards. They are adopted by the Financial Reporting Standards Committee. Ngayon, alamin natin guys ang fundamental concepts of accounting. Meron tayong concepts, meron din tayong principles. Alamin muna natin guys ang tungkol sa concepts. Accounting concepts are similar throughout the nation. Sa ating bansa, sa buong Pilipinas, meron tayong iisa magkakaparehong konsepto sa accounting. The accounting information to be complete in all aspects. So, it helps the accounting information to be complete in all aspects. Pangalawa, it helps the accounting information to be available for the stakeholders on a timely basis. Yung financial reports na kailangan ng mga stakeholders, sino-sino ba itong mga stakeholders? Sila yung mga interested parties or yung mga users of accounting information. At sabi rito, on a timely basis. Dapat relevant siya, dapat hindi nahuhuli, timely, no? napapanahon pa. The accounting information to be understandable by anyone. Madaling maunawaan ng kahit sinong users. At pangapat, it helps also in presenting the accounting information relevant to the analyzer. Now, the fundamental concepts of accounting is isahin na natin. The first one is entity concept. Business owners are treated as separate entities through this concept. Ano ang ibig sabihin ng business entity concept? Kung kayo ay meron tindahan, meron kayong grocery, meron kayong hardware, o kung anumang business meron kayo o ang inyong pamilya, ibig sabihin lang na separate ang inyong personality. Magkaiba ang sa business nyo at magkaiba ang sa inyo. Ang personal na pera ninyo ay hindi pera ng inyong negosyo. Yung mga kinikita ng inyong negosyo ay hindi ninyo pera sa negosyo nyo yun. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng entity concept. Dual aspect concept. In every debit entry, there is a credit entry. Ibig sabihin, sabi nga nung natin nung nakaraan, no, nalaman natin na ang accounting ay art. It is an art. Ibig sabihin, may ginagawa tayo strategies sa pagre-record. At yun na nga, lumabas yung debit at credit. So, every debit entry, there is a credit entry. Kapag tayo ay nag-record ng debit, tayo rin ay magre-record ng credit entry. It is briefly expressed under assets plus liabilities is equals to capital. Ito yung ating accounting equation. Sa mga susunod na araw, ay tatalakayan natin ang tungkol dito. Pangatlo is periodicity concept. It is necessary to know at frequent intervals how things are going. 12-month period is usually adapted for this purpose. This time period is called accounting period. It is also known as periodicity assumption and accounting time period concept. It states that the life of a business can be divided into equal time periods. Yung equal time periods na yun ay pwedeng quarterly, pwedeng uh, every six months, or pwedeng yearly. Usually, ang ginagamit natin ay calendar year, which is from January up to December. Gumagamit din tayo 
ng tinatawag nating fiscal period. Yung ibang mga businesses sa kanilang uh, business cycle, not necessarily na ito ay January hanggang December. Kagaya na lang halimbawa ng mga magsasaka natin. Ang period sa farming, mula sa pagtatanim hanggang sa pag-ani ay hindi sumasakto sa January hanggang December. Nasa pagitan sila ng taon. Uh, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ito ay April hanggang mga September. Yung accounting concept or periodicity concept na pwede natin i-adapt dito ay yung fiscal period na yon. Not necessarily the accounting uh, calendar period na January hanggang December. Pangapat is going concern. This is an assumption made that the business shall run forever and the forced sale value of asset is not valued. It will continue for indefinite period. This implies that the business entity will continue its operations in the future and will not liquidate or be forced to continue or to discontinue operations due to any reason. Ina-assume natin na ang negosyo mo ay hindi agad magsasara or mag stop ng operation. Ia-assume natin dito na ang iyong negosyo ay tuloy-tuloy, forever. Yan yung going concern. Unless there is reasonable uh, instances na talagang makikita mong mag stop na talaga ang iyong operation ng business. Panglima, money measurement concept. Only those transactions are recorded which can be expressed in terms of money. Ang ibig sabihin ng money measurement concept sa uh, tinatawag nating business transactions, ire-record lang natin ang isang transaction kung financial matters or monetary terms. Kung hindi natin ma-quantify sa pamagitan ng money, hindi natin ito ituturing as money measurement concept. Kagaya na lang ng ang isang HR ay nag-hire ng mga empleyado. Hindi pa natin yan may tuturing na business transaction kasi wala pang involved na pera. Kapag binayaran na sila ng kanilang sweldo, yan na may tuturing na natin yung business transaction dahil may involved ng pera. Ang isa pang masasabi natin tungkol sa money measurement concept, halimbawa yung Jollibee ay may branches sa ibang bansa. Kahit dolyar ang kanilang kinikita doon, ang kanilang revenue, hire-report pa rin nila ito in terms of peso dahil ang head office ay nandito sa ating bansa. Cost concept. The cost is considered to be the same as what is paid in the beginning and never its realizable value at a later point in time. Ibig sabihin lang ito, sinusunod natin ang historical concept or cost concept. Usually, sa mga fixed assets, ito ay recorded at a cost price and are systematically reduced by the process called depreciation. Malalaman natin yung tungkol sa depreciation sa mga susunod na araw. Ang tinutukoy ng cost concept na ito, kapag ikaw ay bumili ng isang building halimbawa, lagi mo siyang ire-report sa iyong financial statement kahit lumipas na ang ilang taon, ire-record mo pa rin siya sa kanyang historical cost or yung original cost ng pagkakabili mo sa kanya or these assets will disappear from balance sheet at the end of their economic life when they have been fully depreciated and sold as scrap. So kung ang tansya ng management, ang binili nilang building ay may lifespan ng 10 years, yung depreciation ay isa-set nila for 10 years. So after 10 years, ito na yung sinasabing fully depreciated na ang building at mawawala na ito sa balance sheet. But the practice, actually, para lang 
hindi talaga mawala yung building doon sa record at alam pa rin ng management na mayroon pa rin nag exist na building kahit ito ay fully depreciated na, nilalagay na lang yan as piso or one peso. O para lang hindi mag-disappear sa record. Seven, accrual accounting. The effects of business transactions should be recognized in the period in which they occurred. Income should be recognized in the period when it is carried regardless of when payment is received. Expenses should be recognized in the period when it is incurred regardless of when expenses are earned. Ibig sabihin, kaya tinawag itong accrual accounting. Kung kailan nat na-recognize yung income, doon natin siya ira-record. Halimbawa, nag, uh, nag, tayo ay nagkaroon ng income mula sa ating laundry shop for this month, February. Kahit yan ay utang, kahit iyan ay babayaran ng customer sa March, pero ngayon nangyari ang service, ira-record mo yan ngayon as income, ngayong buwan na ito. Yan ang tinatawag nating accrual accounting. So, ganun din siya sa expenses. Kung kailan siya na-incur, doon mo rin siya ire-record regardless kung kailan mo siya binayaran. Realization concept. Revenue is only recognized when goods or services are delivered or rendered to the buyer. Realization basically refers to the inflows of cash or claims to cash arising from the sale of goods or services. Ang sinasabi dito na yung revenue natin, halimbawa, o yung benta natin, ay re-recognize lang natin yan kapag mayroon na tayong nagawang servisyo or nagbenta tayo. Doon lang natin siya i-recognize. Matching concept. This means that cost should be matched with the revenue generated. In other words, this requires a company to match expenses with related revenues in order to report a company's profitability during a specified time period. Therefore, cost should be matched with the revenue generated. Example natin dito is when you provide tutorial services to a customer and there is a transportation cost incurred related to the tutorial services, it should be recorded as an expense for that period. Kapag tayo ay naggawa ng financial statement, doon sa income statement, makikita ninyo na meron tayong revenue at meron din tayong expenses. Dapat ay meron yan pareho. Kaya tinatawag nating matching concept. May revenue at meron kang expenses or cost for the same period. Now, let us talk about accounting concepts versus accounting principles. The main difference between accounting concepts and accounting principles is accounting concepts are the important conventions with which the accounting data is recorded based on certain assumptions. Whereas, accounting principles are the rules to be followed while reporting financial data. The former is the data recorder while the latter is the data presenter. So, tingnan ninyo ang pagkakaiba nila. Concept assumption. Principle, rules to be followed. The main purpose of accounting concept is to record data by the accountant while the accounting principles are to report the financial data based on GAAP norms. Accounting principles are considered internal for the process as it follows to record the data while accounting principles are also internal but the report has to be presented externally as well. Accounting concepts are to be followed first to record data while accounting principles are followed later to report the financial data. Accounting concepts help in giving complete clarity on the finance data while accounting principles are required to be followed to report the finance data or legal 
compliances. So, ang accounting principles, ito ay sa madaling sabi, rules na ang nag-formulate nito yung ating mga eksperto. Yung generally accepted accounting principles na ang nagawa ay ang Philippine Accounting Standards, Philippine Financial Reporting Standards. Sila ang nag-formulate ng mga yan. Now, let's proceed with the basic principles of accounting. It is almost the same when some of we have discussed dun sa concepts. The first one is objectivity principle. Accounting information should be unbiased and free from any external or internal influence. Independent. This helps financial statements to be trustworthy and be useful for evaluation. Transactions should be supported by documents. Ibig lang sabihin, objectivity principle, kailangan totoo ang transaction at supported by documents. For example, kapag ikaw ay nagbenta ng iyong item, kailangan mo magbigay o mag-issue ng OR or official receipt or yung mga sales invoice at kung ano-ano pang mga ginagamit nating mga documents para sa mga transactions. Yan ang objectivity principle. Pangalawa, cost principle or historical cost principle. It requires that assets be recorded at the original purchase price rather than their current market value. Like yung sinabi natin kanina sa building or sa mga equipment, ire-record natin sila sa kanilang historical cost. Revenue recognition principle. Revenue is to be recognized and determines how to account for it in the accounting period when goods are delivered or services are rendered or performed. Kapag nagawa na natin yung services na tinatawag, saka tayo magre-recognize ng revenue. Regardless kung kailan tayo binayaran. Expense recognition principle. Expenses should be recognized in the accounting period in which goods and services are used up to produce revenue and not in the entity space for those goods and services. So, Kagayaw lang sinabi natin kanina, kung kailan tayo nag-recognize ng revenue, sa period na yon magre-recognize din tayo ng expenses. For example, halimbawa ang mga pasweldo ng mga empleyado, January up to December, ang recognition ng expense para sa salaries should be from January to December. Adequate Disclosure or Full Disclosure Principles It requires that all relevant information that would affect the user's understanding and assessment of the accounting entity disclosed in the loan financial statements. Ibig sabihin nito, kung halimbawa sa iyong financial statement, no, meron kang recorded na oh, maganda siguro yung kalalagayan ng ating cash or ng assets, Subsequently, nagkaroon ng isang sakuna. O halimbawa, nagkaroon ng bagyo or nagkaroon ng earthquake. O kaya naman ay natalo ka sa kaso. I-pupul disclosure na natin yan. Para alam ng mga users kung ano ang nangyari afterwards. Kasi ang iisipin nila na, oy maganda pa rin ang ating standing sa ating cash or sa ating asset. Ang hindi nila alam, na naapektuhan pala yung kumpanya ng isang sakuna at ang kanilang assets ay nabawasan. Hindi alam yun kasi hindi nilagay yung full disclosure. Kaya napakahalaga na meron tayong information na nilalagay doon sa financial statement pa rin when the need arises. Materiality principle. Financial reporting is only concerned with the information that is significant enough to affect evaluations and decisions. SM, halimbawa, hindi material sa kanya ang halagang 50,000. Sa ibang businesses dyan, napakahalaga, napakasignificant ng halagang 50,000. Ibig sabihin, immaterial sa SM, sa San Miguel, ang halagang 50,000, pero sa ibang mas madilit na kumpanya, 
napaka-material ng halagang yan. Yan yung sinasabi sa materiality principle. Mawala man ang 50,000, hindi makaka-apekto sa desisyon ng management ng SM or ng San Miguel or ng iba pang malalaking kumpanya. Pero, malaki ang impact pagdating sa decision making ng halagang 5,000 o halagang 10,000 sa mga kumpanyang medyo maliliit. Consistency principle. The consistency principle is the accounting principle that requires an entity to apply the same accounting methods, policies, and standards for preparing and reporting its financial statements. The main objective of this consistency principle is to avoid any intention from management using an inconsistency approach to manipulate the financial information to ensure their financial statements look healthy. Ang ibig sabihin nitong consistency principle is that kung ano ang ginamit nating principle para sa ating recording at preparation ng financial statement for this period or for this year, dapat sa susunod na taon, ganun pa rin. At sa mga susunod na taon, ganun pa rin. May consistency na tinatawag. Kung ang kumpanya ay gumamit ng straight line method ng depreciation ng asset, dapat sa mga susunod na taon ay straight line method pa rin ang kanilang gagamitin para sa pagde-depreciate ng kanilang assets. Ang sabi rito, the main objective of this principle is to avoid intention from management from manipulating the financial statements. Kung ang nangyayari ay medyo hindi na healthy ang kanilang status or yung kumpanya, pero gusto ng management na palabasin na healthy pa rin yung kumpanya, yung kanilang financial position, ginagamit nila yung ibang principle of recording or of reporting. Ayan. Yan yung sinasabi rito na hindi dapat. Dapat ay maging consistent tayo kung ano ang in natin for this period sa mga susunod na period, yun pa rin ang i natin. Conservatism principle. It is the general concept of recognizing expenses and liabilities as soon as possible when there is uncertainty about the outcome but to only recognize revenues and assets when they are assured of being received. In case of doubt, assets and income should not be overstated while liabilities and expenses should not be understated. Ang sinasabi dito sa conservatism principle, no? ina-anticipate na natin na maaring malugi ang kumpanya dahil sa may nangyaring ganito at ang magiging outcome nito ay ang pagkalugi or ang malaking kabawasan sa financial or sa cash ng kumpanya or sa assets ng kumpanya. Ang example natin dito, class, sa conservatism principle ito, kung nakikinikinita na ng kumpanya, ng management, na matatalo sila sa litigation or sa kaso sinampas sa kanila, i-apply na natin ang conservatism principle. Pero ang sabi dito, In case of doubt, yung assets at income daw ay hindi dapat i-overstate. In case of doubt. Ibig sabihin na in case of doubt, 50-50. Pwede kang hindi malugi, pwede malugi. Yung liabilities and expenses, on the other hand, should not be understated. Now, what is the application of all these concepts and principles we have in accounting as an adherence to generally accepted accounting principles. Understanding the accounting concepts and principles properly is necessary for anyone who is willing to make career or working in the field of accounting. If these concepts and principles are followed in the professional work in a way as needed, accountants can save money, energy, time and efforts while a good grasp of these concepts and principles enable them to work effectively and efficiently ang sinasabi dito makakasave tayo ng money energy effort kung susundin natin ang generally 
accepted accounting principle. Dahil ito, ang mga principles na yan ay napag-aralan na ng mga eksperto at uh, base sa kanilang experience. Kaya inilatag na nila ang kanilang ang uh, ganyang mga principles. Accountants need to apply professional judgments while preferring financial reports. These concepts and principles help them to ensure that they are not being misled and that providing a true and fair view of financial statements is being accomplished. The accounting concepts and principles are important for accountants as they need to abide by them every time they involve in analyzing, recording, summarizing, reporting, and interpreting financial and transactions of a business. Yung mga accountants ay kinakailangan dumating sa punto ng decision making or professional judgments. Ang gaap ang nagiging Biblia nila para ang kanilang mga judgments, ang kanilang mga decisions ay maging tama. Kung magkakaroon ng tinatawag nating hindi kasiguruduhan or kalituhan kung ano ang dapat na maging hakbang pag na-encounter nila isang problema, itong mga concepts and principles na ito ang dapat nilang sundin. Sabi ko nga kanina, itong mga principles na ito ay hinug na sa panahon. Ito ay na-encounter na, na-experience na ng ating mga eksperto at kung kaya't nilatag na nila ang mga principles and concepts na ito para i-apply at i-implement din ng iba't ibang mga kumpanya. And now, for our question of the week. Ali Marites sold a piece of cupcake to her neighbor. Apparently, her customer is out cash. So, Ali Marites had to consider it as credit but still recorded it in her books. What concept of accounting was observed? Letter A, accrual concern concept. Letter B, going concern concept. Letter C, materiality principle. Letter D, matching principle. Comment your answers in the comment section. So class, hanggang dito na lang yung ating lesson for the week. And again, see you next week. Have a nice day.